Project Crewman is about to get a big shot in the arm as the new engine is starting to come together on this episode of Josh's Car Corner. This is going to be a very special episode of Josh's Car Corner because it is a big step in Project Crewman because I'm finally going to start putting together what is going to become the new heart of the crewman. What we've got here is an L92 LS block. So this is a 6.2 liter aluminum truck block that was used in the Cadillac Escalade and the Denali Yukons and a couple of other top truck uh, trim levels. It's basically been stripped clean by the guy I bought it from in Madison. And all he has done is run a dingle ball through the cylinders and just give it a, a nice hone and a refresh. So the first thing I need to do on this engine is to put the rotating assembly back together. Now I have never put a rotating assembly in one of the engines that I've had in one of my cars. I've had the GTO engine apart a couple of times, but I've always trusted somebody else to put the rotating assembly back together. The reason I'm getting away with it this time is because I'm using all factory stuff. What I've got is the original L92 crankshaft, and I'm going to use the original L92 rods and pistons. I'm just gonna re-ring and re-bearing everything. The reason I can get away with that is because it's all OE stuff. One of my concerns with putting the rotating assembly back in this thing was that I might need to have it balanced, and that's a complicated process that I cannot do myself, and then I was gonna have to trust it to a machine shop, and if I was gonna go that far, might as well have them throw it in the block right away. But I talked to my good friend, Matt Peckham, who works at Middleton Performance, which is in the Middleton Ford dealership in Middleton, Wisconsin. They mess with top tier Ford Mustangs, Shelby's, thousand horsepower cars. He's got a 900 horsepower GT500. Um, so if you like Mustangs, check out Middleton Ford. I'll put a little link up in the corner here. Uh, you can go check them out if you like it. But anyway, he's the only guy in the world I'll ever trust to touch my cars outside of me. So I asked his advice and he said, they don't sit there and balance out rod and piston assemblies in the factory to crankshafts. It's all built to a tolerance. So if you're putting just stock parts back in, you don't have to worry about balancing anything. Now, if you were changing pistons or connecting rods to more high performance and lighter weight stuff, you would end up changing the bob weight on the top end of the connecting rod. And then you would need to rebalance everything. But because this is all OE, don't have to do it. Just got to put it back together. Now, as part of cleaning this up, they took all of the journals on the crankshaft down 10 thousandths of an inch. So what that means is when I put it all back together, I'm going to have to use undersized bearings, which I've got. And I'm also proud to, at this point, mention um, someone that's going to be helping me uh, with this project and who I'm going to be working with a lot in the future, Michigan Motorsports. I've actually got <laughs> their hat right here. I'd be wearing it but then you wouldn't see my face because the light is all overhead. They deal in a lot of LS parts and just like a bunch of the other companies, they've got the high performance M2, but they also cater a lot to just the basic tools and hardware you might need just to put a basic LS back together. So I got a ton of stuff from them. I've got new front cover gasket, rear cover gasket, water pump gaskets, all of the bearings for the crankshaft, the connecting rods. I've got new cam bearings that I'm going to install, new piston rings. We've got front engine and rear engine cover seals, bolt hardware. I've got new front engine cover and rear engine cover bolts. I've got new exhaust header bolts. I've got a new harmonic balancer bolt, oil pan bolts. I even got another improved racing high performance dumbbell to put in the back of the block, just like I did on the GTO. Their response time to getting parts has been great. I've never waited more than two days from ordering something to getting it. Even though I live a state away, I'm still impressed by that. So they're a great company. And if you're just looking for like basic parts or just more OE pieces, if you're doing like a basic build, I would check them out because their prices are really good as well. So I'll get everything situated here and we'll get started installing the cam bearings. Okay, I am getting ready to install the new cam bearings here. And these are them right here. Uh, this is the Durabon brand. Now, when you get these things, the thing to pay attention to is this information right here. See, there are three different diameters of these bearings in these bores. They actually have three different size holes. It's to, they put more diameter on the outside ends to give the cam more stability when it's sitting in the block. So they actually put these in the uh, box in order, which is nice. But even if you don't know for sure, 
there's a part number that's stamped right on the outside diameter here and you can read that so in these particular bearings the outside diameter is a dash one the middle ones which is two and four are a little bit smaller that's dash two and then the last one the middle one that is dash three so what i've done is i have gone ahead and done two things i've actually labeled put a number on each one for where it's going to go and also these bearings have two oiling holes in them. You only need one oiling hole. All of the journals, they all have an oil hole and they are all in the same place. So what I've done is I have rotated the motor around so these oiling passages are all straight up, pointed at me. Then I've taken one of those holes and I've taken a Sharpie and I've just marked around it. So what I'm looking for is see right there. When I look over the lip of the bearing, I'll be able to see that mark and make sure that this thing is aligned. You want this hole to be right over the middle of that opening. The opening is about, you know, that wide. You want this thing right over the middle. And I will verify after I put it in that it is the right way. Now they don't go in a specific direction. You can put them in either direction. That doesn't matter. The only thing you need to know is you have to put them in after you have the tool slid into the block. So I'm going to slide this in so where it's going to be between positions four and five. Then we'll slide this into the front bearing position to center it. Then I'll break out the hammer and I'll start pounding this one in. Okay, I just wanna show you quick the cam bearing sitting on the tool. So you have to put this in sideways first so it'll fit in this in here. Then you can turn it the correct orientation. Then you slide the tool in and put it on the tool. So this is not the way it's gonna sit. I have to turn that little mark straight up, like I said, and then I will uh, get it started in. Okay, the tool's in here, the alignment thing is in here. Here we go. I think that is moving. Just going slow about it. That's getting closer. That looks pretty darn square. Take the tool out here. Okay, these journals are a lot wider than the bearing actually is, so I got it pretty much flush with the back side here. I might want to bring that back a little bit. I probably didn't want to go quite that far. Yeah, I think I'm going to pound that out and bring it back because that's not quite the right place. So I'm going to be doing it again. <laughs> out yeah I had that too far forward so no big deal reset try again you know what I'm gonna give it just a little bit more of a little tap just a little bit more that might be enough right there yeah that is pretty centered so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a pick and I'm just going to put it up there through the oil hole and make sure it is aligned. The oil hole is right there. And yeah, that goes up and in there all the way. So that is aligned with the oil hole. So one bearing is done. On to the next one. Okay, so the next part of this cam bearing install is gonna be a little trickier. So someone's got a great video you can watch on YouTube that explains how to use this tool. And one of the things they say, which makes sense if you think about it, is that you want this bar as far into the block as possible. So this alignment piece right here is the most effective. The farther in the tool goes, the more straight everything will be. So if it's really close, you can't guarantee it's gonna be as straight in like the second position as it would be in like the fourth position. So the way they want this done is to turn it around and then to do the last two bearings from this side. 
So I've had to take it off of the engine stand, and unfortunately I gotta do this part on the ground, and now the holes aren't pointing straight up anymore either, so I've gotta be more careful about setting the position of the bearing before I start pounding it in. But I'm gonna do this bearing, and then I'm gonna do the last bearing in the front. Um, that one's gonna be a lot easier, because I'll be able to see that little mark I drew, and I'll know exactly where that is. This one I can kinda see it, but it's gonna be a little trickier, so I'm gonna get set up here. I've got to kind of hand hold it and it's going to be really fiddly, so I'm not going to film putting this one in, but I'll show you the final result. Okay, the cam bearings are now all installed in the block. I just got done putting assembly lube on all of them, so they're all lubed up and ready to go. Now I want to test fit to make sure that a cam goes in there smoothly and turns nice and free so I can make sure that all of the bearings are aligned. And to do that, I pulled out of mothballs this guy. This is my factory cam from the GTO that I took out 11 years ago and I don't know why I've held on to it for all these years but I do still have it and it's still in good shape so I'm going to slide this in there and then I'm just going to spin it around and make sure it turns nice and free. First one feels good. Second one's in there. One to go. A lot of assembly lube. I think that's Nice and tight on there. Okay, here we go. So now to check. It's kind of hard to turn. I've only got the one pin, but it seems to be turning all right. So that's good. Now I just want to check and make sure that all of the bearings are positioned where they're going to be sitting on the journals of the cam. Let me get my light out for that. Okay. I think all the bearings are in a good spot. So this part of the rebuild is now complete. So next thing I'm gonna do is pull the main caps out and I'm gonna put the new bearings in. Okay, I just got all of these main bearings broken loose here and I'm taking them out. So fortunately, all of the main bearings are the same diameter. So you don't have to worry about putting certain ones in certain places. There is one different one though, which is this middle one, which is known as the thrust bearing. Not only does this bearing hold the crankshaft, it also keeps the crankshaft from walking back and forward in the block. See how it's got these sections right here? That's to stop it walking. So this one always goes in the middle. You just have to remember that. So I'm gonna get all these bearing surfaces cleaned off and then I will show you how you put these bearings in the block and in the main caps. Okay, so you've got this bearing, right? See how it's got this groove cut into it? This is the side that goes into the block. Uh, the other side that doesn't have this in it is the side that will go in the main cast, which we'll see later. So first thing I'm going to do is just take a fresh paper towel and I'm just going to make sure there's no contaminants or anything on the underside of this. The way this works is you've got this tang here. So you've got also slots cut into all of the journals. So what happens is you start by putting this tang in and make sure it's flush with the uh, where it's going to bolt down the main cap and then you just push it in, and that's all there is to it. You just wanna make sure that it's flush on both sides, which that is. So I'm gonna do the same thing for two, four, and five, and then I will show you the uh, thrust bearing separately here. Okay. You wanna do all of them at once? Um, yeah, we can. So just wanna show, we're about to, do the test of clearances for the uh, main bearings here. So this is the plastic gauge right here. You can probably see that. Just this little plastic right here. So we're gonna lay this on top of every uh, of every main cap journal. So we're gonna put this like so right here. We torque the main caps down, the main cap squeezes that. Then we take the main cap back off and then we got a little measurement that's on these little pieces of paper right here and we just measure how thick it got stretched out when, the, uh, when we torqued it down. And then that'll tell us what our clearance is and we'll make sure that all of our clearances are in spec. Okay, so this is when you find out that you have a tool and you don't even know you have it because I bought this torque wrench off of Amazon a couple of years ago when I rebuilt the GTO engine again. And we just found out it's got an angle function in it. So I had Sean bring over his uh, torque to angle torque wrench for nothing. I already had one. So. And it's broke. And it's, and, it's, and it's broken, so it's a good thing I had this. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're going ahead and doing the torque to angle. So the way this procedure works, um, you gotta do 15 pounds 
on all the bolts first, but you got to do it in the order like it's a head gasket. So you start in the middle, then you go out to the middle ones, then you go out to the uh, end ones. And you got to do the inside bolts first. You do those 10, then you got to do the studs next. And you start in the center again, work your way out. So we've done our 15 foot pounds. Now we're doing our angle right now on the bolts. Then we're going to do our angle on the studs. Then we're just going to take it all off and we're going to look at that plastic gauge and measure our clearance. This is the end result. So right now what we're doing is we're measuring. What do we got there? Just over two thousandths or under two thousandths. Just Excuse under me. two thousandths. Okay. A little bit on the high end for uh, what the factory wants for clearance, but it is within spec. That's about just over one and a half thou. Can you see it up there? Yep. Okay. A little over one and a half. All right. This one will be about easier. Two. Just a little bit under two. The wider it is, the more the the smaller the clearance. Just under two. Just under two. And then I drop like the thing I want here. Oh, we got one more to measure. <laughs> and then again, just under two. Just so under two. So we are definitely within spec. So that's all we needed to know. So now we can final torque this thing down with some lube. And we have now got all of the main cap bolts torqued down and torqued to angle two. So that part's done. This thing turns really nice and super smooth. One more measurement we have to make is we have to measure the run out. So you've got that thrust bearing in the middle that stops the crank walking back and forth. We have to make sure that the run out is good. We only need one thousandth of an inch. So we've got a micrometer set up on it. Then we're gonna take a screwdriver and put it in here and we're gonna manually move the crankshaft forward and make sure the run out is about a thousandth of an inch. All right, go for it. Well, that came, yeah, that came to one. Now you're back at zero. Okay. So no, we've got about one. Perfect. One, one and a half, so that's perfect. All right, this crankshaft, so there's one more thing we gotta do here. We've got these bolts that go along the channel here. I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod and explain one thing about them quick. So these bolts, if you are rebuilding an LS engine, are reusable. The only thing is, these are oil passage bolts. So from the factory, these come with a thread sealer on them. So all I have to do is take the bolts and we're gonna reapply some Permatex thread sealer to them before they go back into the block. But they only take 18 foot pounds, no torque to angle stuff. Just put this on, torque them down. We are done with the crank. So here's what you wanna do with these bolts. Now I, I took my wire wheel to them and I cleaned them all off and got all the threads clean. But you wanna put this thread sealant on the threads, but you also wanna put it on the head of the bolt like that there too, because it's gonna press against the side of the block and really seal it up. So we're doing that right now. And then we're gonna get onto rods and pistons. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is check piston ring end gap. So on a piston, you have got two compression pistons that occupy these top two ring grooves. And on the bottom one is your oil control ring, which is made up of three pieces. It's got a top keeper and a bottom keeper, and then it's got the actual ring part in there. So what I'm doing is just specking out the rings that were on these pistons to see if they are still in tolerance. So, I just take them like this, and what you do is, this is the top ring, what you do is you just put it in like this, then take an empty piston and use it to shove the ring down so it's straight and square. So I basically push it down until the skirt is fully in the bore, like that, because I know the piston is straight, and then the ring is straight, and I pull it out, then take a feeder gauge, like so, and spec it out. Now I already did this one, and I came out with 20 thousandths end ring gap clearance. Now the service manual says you want on the top ring eight to 16 thousandths clearance. So this has actually got a little bit more gap in it uh, than you would like. Now in a boosted application, you actually want more end ring end gap than this. You probably want at least 30 thousandths. This is an NA build. I want factory tolerances, so I am gonna replace these piston rings. So I'm gonna pull out a brand new ring and I'm gonna do the same thing, mic it out and see what new rings come out to. Okay, I've got the new first compression ring here. And first thing I can tell us is that this is definitely stiffer than the ring I just took out. It's got more spring in it. So that's an indication that this is a much newer piece of metal. So I'm gonna do the same process here, like that, pull it out. Get out my feeler gauge. Now, again, factory tolerance is 8 to 16 thousandths ring end gap. So I'm going to start at 8. Let's see what I get. 
Yeah, it definitely fits. So I'm gonna go right to the extreme 16 and see if that fits. It fits, but it's tight. So I would say the ring end gap is definitely 16 thousandths, which is right on the high end of what the factory wants. And for me, that is fine. So I was concerned that I might have to do a little bit of filing on these ring ends to make sure that they're gonna be within spec, but this is on the high end of spec. So this is gonna be fine and it is stiffer and it's got a better gap than what I'm taking out. So we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second compression ring quick and just see where that comes out. Okay, so here I am with the block and as you can see, most of the cylinders are now put together. The last one is sitting right here. I didn't want to film the process of putting all eight in, that would get boring. So I just want to walk you through what happened uh, when I was going around putting in all of these. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. I thought Sean and I would have these all slammed in in a couple of hours. It ended up taking me about eight hours. And the thing that really held us up was the rings. All of the top compression rings were fine. They were a little wider tolerance than the factory rings or what the factory would prefer. Not a big deal. It just means there's gonna be a little more leak by. The second rings all ended up having less of a tolerance built into them, less of a ring gap than the top rings. And if you do any research online, you find out that you actually want more ring gap on the second ring than you have on your first ring because if combustion pressure does leak by the top compression ring, it needs to be able to get out. So you want just a little more tolerance on that second compression ring. And that second compression ring has also got the groove cut into it. It's got a notch right here. Uh, it's like a scraper to scrape uh, the cylinder bores clean. I had to open up six of these and I did it the cheap way. I didn't want to spend money on a ring tool because I might only do this once. So all I did is I bought a file like this, clamped it down to the bench vertically, and then I just went slowly and scraped a little bit, came back, measured it again, rinse, lather, repeat. And that on its own took about you know, two and a half hours to get them all opened up to the correct gap. Then when I was going to put in cylinder number four, I kept having problems with the new oil control rings on that cylinder. They were just spread way farther out than all the other rings and I couldn't get them to seat when I put them into the compression tool. And every time I would put the whole piston in the compression tool, they'd hop out of the groove and then they would get stuck in here. And after trying to pound the piston down a couple of times and it not moving and pulling it up and realizing that's what was happening, those rings just would not close up. I could not get them in. So I had to go dig two of the old oil control rings out of the garbage and put those in instead because they stayed nice and closed up. They're not such a big deal. All they do is they hold that rings, that spring ring that's for the oil control. They hold it in place. So they're not actually sealing anything. So using old ones there, not such a big deal. The other thing that held me up, and this is the one that kind of ticks me off, is my friends, our friends at ARP. So my engine builder told me that when I put it back together, use ARP rod cap bolts. The weakest point in any LS bottom end is the rod cap bolts, even though they're pretty darn strong, they are the weakest point. And because the factory ones are torqued to yield, change them out. So you look at these bolts and you think to yourself, okay, that's a 12 point, 10 millimeter head, right? Well, turns out it's not. So after buying two different 10 millimeter 12 point sockets and then slipping on the threads, I finally went on the ARP website and found out, no, no, they're 3 8 SAE heads. Now, why are they 3 8 SAE heads? Because 60 years ago, when they started building upgraded rod bolts for the small block Chevy, they were in SAE because small block Chevy engines were in SAE. Of course, ever since 1988, every bolt in a GM engine has been metric. So did ARP update the head to be metric, just like everything since 1988? No, they chose to save money and go with the old SAE 3 ace head because then they didn't have to buy new dies and it would cost them less. So all of us as LS fans go, get to go out and buy one socket that we will use for one purpose and never use again because everything else in the engine is metric. So thank you to ARP for that one. So anyway, I've got the last cylinder in here. This is a pretty simple process. Just orient the block so the 
bank that you're filling in is pointing straight up and down. That way the rod is standing vertical and when you start to pound it down, it doesn't accidentally run into anything. So just with the end of a hammer, make sure it's plastic or wood or something, not metal. You just give it a couple of simple taps and I've oiled up the piston on the sides of the ring compressor and on the, uh, and on the piston itself. And it doesn't take long to get it in the hole. In fact, it is in the hole, it's not in the bore. So now, all I have to do is come here and continue to just tap it down slowly, grab the rod end, and start to navigate it on to the journal. Almost there. Okay, that's all the way down. Done with the hammer. Now, we can rotate the motor over, and now, you can see the last two cylinders here. So now I got to do the plastic gauge. So I'll show you that this, for this last set here. First thing I want to do is I want to orient the bottom of the motor so one of these rods is sitting up and down vertical. So I'll start with number seven. So see how I got that oriented? I want the end of the rod that's exposed to be vertical because I need to put the plastic gauge straight up and down so it's in the middle of the bearing. Okay, you see the plastic gauge sitting on the journal like that? Now I will put the cap on and then I will torque it down to its spec and then I'll do the same thing to the other side, rotate the motor around and then once they're both done I'll just take the caps back off and we'll see what we have. Okay, we've got our marks, we've got our little gauge right here. Let's see what we've got. So that is definitely bigger than 20 thousandths. That is probably about 18, which is what I've been consistently getting on all of the uh, rods that I put in is about 18 thousandths. We'll check this side. Same thing. Yeah, not quite 15. But definitely wider than 20. I'd say that's about 18. So all of the uh, rod journals are coming out about the same. That is excellent. All right. That is it. I can put this in here, make sure everything still spins over freely. And that still spins over pretty good. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Eight cylinders moving smoothly. All right, so there's pretty close to TDC on number one. I'll leave her parked there for the time being. So that is it. The rotating assembly is done. I have a short block. There will be definitely more episodes on building this engine. Next one might be more things with the engine, oil pans and camshafts and cylinder heads like that. Or the next one could be more wiring. But I promise there will be more episodes in the near future on Project Crewman. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Josh's Car Corner and we'll see you next time. Once again, a big thank you to Michigan Motorsports for selling so many of the parts that I used on this project. If you're building an LS from the ground up and you need a bunch of the little insignificant parts, these guys have them. You should check them out at michiganmotorsports.com. Like what you just saw? Let me know with a thumbs up or by subscribing and clicking that little bell so you know when new episodes come out. And be sure to join the new Facebook group I set up too for Josh's Car Corner. Okay, this you have got to see. I cannot make this up. So the block is sitting on a bit of an angle on the engine stand, right? So here's the cam. The bores are so true, watch this. I push the cam back in and it slides right back out. <laughs> I'd say those bores are pretty true in there, aren't they? That is an oddly encouraging thing to see. Look at that. <laughs> Assembly lube for the win.